We are back with our Safer Cars for India agenda once again on CNB. It's a brand new episode and we've got some big news coming your way. I am Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. We'll get started straight away with Global NCAP's India crash tests. Yes, now more crash tests have been conducted and I'm jumping straight into that big news. There is uh, good news and bad news and uh, you may be surprised in both cases or maybe not. Maruti Suzuki's subcompact sub 4 meter SUV, the Vitara Brezza, has been crash tested by Global NCAP and has scored an impressive 4 star overall safety rating. The SUV was crash tested in the frontal offset test at the standard 64 km per hour in a crash lab in Germany and scored well in terms of passenger safety and in terms of body shell integrity too. The Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza is the fifth car from India to score a 4 star safety rating joining the likes of its biggest competitor, the Tata Nexon, that has also scored 4 stars. While adult crash protection for the Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza was rated at 4 stars, child safety in the rear seat was rated at 2. The body shell of the Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza post the crash was also rated as stable. The report also states that the body shell is capable of taking even more damage and still sustaining its structural integrity. The Brezza's body shell takes most of the brunt of the damage to its front end while the likes of the A-pillar remain completely unaffected. This means that there is very little intrusion into the passenger cell itself. The Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza has both ABS and two airbags as standard across all variants. It also gets pre-tensioner seat belts and isofix child mounts across the range. Well, we're extremely impressed, uh, really delighted with the, the performance of the Brezza. Uh, it's a big step forward from Ruti Suzuki. It's a very good four-star car. Uh, it's been engineered here in India, which is even more impressive. It's really a homegrown Maruti Suzuki. It shows what the company is capable of. Um, and it's, it makes me very confident that we're, we're this close to the first five-star car in, in India. Global NCAP also states that the head protection for both driver and passenger is good. The passenger also gets good chest and knee ratings. The driver, on the other hand, gets marginal chest and knee ratings. At the rear, the ISOFIX system for child seats worked very well for the larger test dummies simulating a 3-year-old child, but not so well for one that simulated an 18-month child. Other cars in India that have received the Global NCAP 4-star rating, apart from the next one that we mentioned earlier, include the Toyota Etios, the Tata Zest and the Volkswagen Polo. The Renault Logi has been tested by the Global NCAP as a part of the Safer Cars for India campaign and has scored a very poor zero-star rating. As with every other vehicle tested by Global NCAP, the Logi was tested at 64 km per hour in the frontal offset crash test and sadly has showcased poor results. The Logi MPV that was tested did not have airbags as standard, nor did it have child safety systems like ISOFIX. The Logi also does not have ABS as standard. NCAP has also rated the body shell of the Logi as unstable. Adult crash safety was rated at 0 stars for the Renault Logi, while child safety in the rear seat was rated at 2 stars. Driver protection, especially for the head, has been rated as poor, mainly due to the impact that the driver's head had with the steering wheel due to the lack of an airbag. In comparison, passenger rating for the Logi for head impact was rated good. Worryingly though, the lack of airbags meant that the other ratings like chest and knee protection for the driver were also poor or marginal. Well, the Renault Logi is disappointing. I can't 
conceal that. Uh, back 20 years ago, Renault got a very good reputation under the leadership of Mr. Schweitzer, who was then the CEO, became the first uh, manufacturer to get a whole string of five-star cars in, in Euro NCAP. Uh, now things are a bit different, and I have to say, I think this should be a wake-up call for Carlos Ghosn. Uh, I know he has a lot on his plate, you know, with r running this big alliance and Mitsubishi and Nissan and so on. But I think the days of Renault having zero-star cars, really, it's an embarrassment. I just think, I've got a very clear message for Renault. Across the whole range, they should have standard airbags for the front, passenger and driver. No ifs, no buts, just do it. Considering the fact that Renault in the past have scored a zero-star rating with the quid, which was then improved marginally to a one-star rating by adding a driver's side airbag, the Logi certainly should have fared considerably better. Similarly, the Renault Duster also had scored a zero-star rating without airbags, a score which was then improved drastically to three stars with driver and passenger airbags added. Other zero-star cars in the past include the likes of the Tata Nano, the now-defunct Chevrolet Enjoy, Hyundai Eon, Maruti Suzuki Eco, Maruti Suzuki Celerio, the Hyundai i10, the Datsun Go, the Maruti Suzuki Swift in its last generation, and the Maruti Suzuki Alto. Now that news on the crash test results came from Global NCAP, coinciding with its first ever World Congress here in India, which means all the NCAPs from around the world get together to try and discuss what's important to their agenda in the coming year. Cyrus was there to bring you this and a very special demonstration that also happened on the sidelines of that event. While crash tests show that the range of cars sold in India, especially the newer ones like the Vitara Brezza or the Nexon are getting safer with the likes of airbags as standard, most of these safety systems actually come into play only when an actual crash happens. But wouldn't it be better to just avoid it in the first place? Wouldn't it be better to stop the crash? To show how driver and rider assistance systems like ESC and ABS can help save lives and avoid crashes altogether, the Stop the Crash program with Global NCAP organized a series of demonstrations on India's Formula 1 track, the Booth International Circuit. The systems showcase for four-wheelers with ESC or Electronic Stability Control and AEB or Autonomous Emergency Braking and ABS in both single and double channel form for two wheelers. Now ESC or electronic stability control has been a system which has been around for a long time in luxury cars and uh, it's been sort of slowly pushing its way towards the smaller car segment in India. In fact in European countries it's actually a mandatory fitment across almost all cars that you can buy there. That said, NCAP is pushing really hard to have ESC mandatory for a country like India because with our sort of slippery and not so ideal road conditions it really does make a huge difference now to actually demonstrate how it works NCAP has set up a little bit of an experiment so the cars are going to come down straight from there and try to avoid this obstacle here which has been set up with a bunch of cones and of course we are standing on a slightly wet tarmac which is slightly slippery so in terms of just avoiding this um, obstacle they're going to go around and try to continue on their way now we're going to try it first with ESC off and then see how much of a difference it makes with the ESC on does it make a big difference? Well, actually, yes, it does. Check it out. Let's see how a car handles the sudden change of direction with ESC turned off. As you see, the Ford Freestyle, the most affordable car in India to get ESC, could not complete the maneuver with ESC turned off. And if this was a real life scenario on a street or on a road, it would probably have gone off the road and crashed into a tree or maybe a pole, etc. Incidentally, all these tests were run at about 65 to 70 km per hour, which is general driving speeds for most road users in India. Now let's see the difference with the system turned on. As you can clearly see, ESC makes a huge difference in bringing the car back to its lane and staying in control at all times. Let's see both once again side by side to see how the car behaves differently with the system turned off and turned on. ESC is essentially an add-on to the ABS system and while there is an added cost involved, considering the fact that over 3 lakh cars are sold in India every month and it is a proven lifesaver, it is high time that it is mandated by law. On average, each ESC system could cost a manufacturer between 25 to 30,000 rupees. 
there is a, a remarkable business case standing behind such implementation of such a technology for a company like us. But on the other side, you have to see that we are, first of all, also, as we are generally supporting safety, um, very, very much enthusiastic about the potentials we can expect by the reduction of the number of accidents, by the reduction of the number of fatalities or also severe injuries. So, of course, it is uh, also a commercial aspect in such kind of a technology, no doubt. But first of all, it is important to see really the potentials in the injury prevention. Now, contrary to popular belief, most accidents actually happen when you're at crawling speed, city speeds, up to maybe 30 kilometers an hour. And while those might not be fatal, they do, of course, have a big uh, effect on pedestrians that you might knock into and, of course, your car, which is why uh, systems like uh, automated uh, autonomous emergency braking come into play. And a lot of cars like, like this Volvo XC40 that we are in uh, have these systems as standard now in India. Uh, NCAP is also working very strong towards making these mandatory across uh, platforms, across model ranges, uh, starting from really cheap cars to, of course, the more expensive stuff. And uh, considering the fact that more and more manufacturers are moving towards autonomous cars, systems like these, which are basic autonomous level systems, might become uh, the norm in India soon. Historically, EB started more than 20 years ago in Europe, it became almost uh, standard, we'll say over 80-90% in every new car in Europe now. So when you look on the worldwide new vehicle market, it's already sufficient portion which has AB. So uh, to grow now to include an additional Indian market, it's a growing from whatever, uh, 55 to 60 and not to the 10 to the 15% anymore. So economy of scale effect is already there. So that India can benefit, that's almost all manufacturers worldwide, have adapted this technology, know how to do it serially in, in big volumes and that's why this step should be absolutely affordable because it's so helpful technology, so beneficial for, for real world. Autonomous emergency braking systems can work on a variety of hardware options from cameras to radar and usually work to about 50 kilometers per hour. The system can not only help save lives, especially when it comes to pedestrians, but as an upside, also help you save money with slow speed fender benders. Uh, I think it's, it's very good that uh, the authorities are taking active action in, in deploying autonomous driving and uh, active braking, active safety systems. We've already had it in our cars uh, since the last couple of years now as standard. So emergency braking, autonomous braking from 50 to 0 in all Volvos is standard. Uh, and we'd like to see obviously other manufacturers also be a part of this safety movement. So now that we're done with four-wheeler safety systems, let's move on to two wheels because sadly the number of people who do die on two wheels is just far, far greater in India than the number of people who have an accident or a fatality on uh, while, while being a passenger or while driving a car. Now, you might be wondering what uh, these rods are attached to both the TVS uh, 310RR and, of course, the Hero 200R. They're actually a sort of fail-safe mechanism when doing these tests. Now, what NCAP is doing here is showcasing how bike ABS or two-wheeler ABS works. Essentially, you're going to have people come and brake really really hard on a multi sort of multitude of road surfaces so wet and dry and showcase how braking distance changes and braking characteristics change between a bike without ABS and a bike with ABS. Now this of course is two channel ABS which is much better. In India we do have a norm now which has CBS or combined braking system and uh, a, a single channel ABS compulsory in most two wheelers. That said the difference this makes is unbelievable with the ABS turned off and the ABS turned on. I'm not going to say much, have a look at these visuals and you'll be the judge of which one's better. As you can see, ABS makes a huge difference when it comes to stopping distance and also the way the bike actually reacts to emergency braking. While India has mandated ABS to bikes over 125cc, Almost 80% of all two-wheelers sold in India are below the 125cc displacement and they are either scooters or commuter motorcycles. And in that category, the government has mandated only CBS or combined braking systems. 
while ABS actually stops the wheel from locking altogether. CBS, which has been around for a long time internationally, only applies both the front and rear brakes in tandem, which might still result in a lockup. ABS instead of CBS would make a huge difference in cutting down the number of two-wheeler accidents on the road. I, I agree, there's a very strong case for that. We have exactly the same discussion in Europe, and uh, it is important, and exactly if you say, certainly the scale and importance of the, of the below 125 capacity. So, yeah, I mean, as you can hear, I'm very happy to congratulate the government on the initiative so far, uh, but they could go uh, a step further on that. With crash tests conducted by NCAP already shaking up the Indian automakers into providing safer cars for India, bringing about a culture of safety consciousness into Indian customers, the Stop the Crash initiative by Global NCAP now goes a step further to ensure cars and bikes are smart enough to avoid crashing in the first place. The Stop the Crash campaign wasn't the only NCAP activity that took place though. More importantly, India also played host to the prestigious NCAP Global Congress that saw NCAP representatives from all over the world and safer car initiative representatives from all over the world gather at the Institute of Road Traffic Education in New Delhi for a two-day program. A think tank discussion of sorts was mainly focused on challenges moving forwards, especially in a developing country like ours, but also challenges faced in various NCAP organizations around the world. One of the biggest concerns moving forwards, of course, will be fleet vehicle safety. Considering the fact that ride hailing or ride sharing apps like Uber are popular in India and increasingly popular around the world too, car owners and fleet owners alike need to invest in safer cars both for themselves and for their passengers. A lot of new car sales generally get sold to big corporate fleets and government fleets. So they make up about 50% of new car sales. So if you think about the buying power that fleet managers have, they can actually go to manufacturers and say, I want five-star vehicles with ESC, with AEB, with a lot of these technologies, and manufacturers will supply it. So fleet managers have this massive buying power that they can utilise for society's benefit as well as their company's benefit because companies often only use these new cars for about three years to five years, and then they flow on into the second-hand market. Another crucial point of discussion that really got opinions flowing was the much less talked about, especially in India, issue of child safety. While most people assume that holding their child in their hands is the safest way of transporting them in a car, in reality it is the exact opposite. Children must always be placed in a child seat or a booster seat that has been tethered properly. This is also when Isofix really comes into play as an add-on safety feature. People who are buying a car or travelling in a car should insist that their child who is in the car is as safe as they can be. So um, my, my, my way of thinking about this is that if you're a mother and you have a child, that you and that child need to be as safe as they can be when they're travelling. So if that's in a vehicle, that you get yourself a car seat to restrain that child and that from mother to mother, we can share the best practice to look after our children. Another example of promoting child safety, one that was used quite successfully, was to educate the grandmothers of the children about the importance of child seats and child safety in general. This method seemed to work especially well in some parts of Latin America. Of course, it's not just car makers who need to give this technology to push users to use it, but also governments who need to do their little bit to ensure these factors be made a part of policy and then of course enforce them. So children are vulnerable and though the government has come out with that we must have the UN laws, but that's not all. Who's importing? What duties? What sort of seats? How should they be tied? How should we buckle to the seat? Are the restraints good enough? I mean, there's nobody excepting that one person who sits in the ministry makes a law and then nothing happens after that. While Indian cars have quickly adapted to the curve and are getting safer, the big question on everyone's mind was quite simple. Is India ready to go from a safer cars initiative to a full-fledged end cap all on its own. 
Yes. But not now. We, we think that you're ready since many years ago, since we started. We would like to see some local initiative to lead the NCAP. Global NCAP is more than open to cooperate and support as much as we can. We are absolutely open for that and we would like to support. But we would like to see the local initiative to take the lead and, and go ahead. They definitely should go for Baranaka. With the race to getting the first 5-star car rating in India in full steam from a range of automakers, it is great to see how NCAP and its programs have truly shaped both the attitude of the automaker in India and more importantly, the psyche of the auto buyer in the country. Well, on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. You've got to react to the crash tests as well. And we may have more crash test results for you before you know it. Please keep your seatbelts on. Please keep your helmets on. See you.